I've got this uh, artificial tree, which isn't very big because we tend to actually celebrate Christmas with my family, so we're not usually here at home, but I do like to put a tree up. However, we don't really have a covering for the bottom of the tree. We don't have a tree skirt at all, but this time I am going to actually knit ourselves a tree skirt for our artificial tree. I'm going to be using yarn for my yarn stash. This is quite a bulky pattern because I'm hoping that it won't take me too, too long. I'm using Knit Picks Wonder Fluff, which is the bulkiest yarn that I have in my stash, and I'm pretty sure I have more than enough of that. Oh, right, really quickly for today, the sweater that I am wearing, I do get asked about this quite often. I'm pretty sure this is the first ever vintage sweater that I knit for myself. It is a 1940s pattern, and I will link it in the description down below, both the yarn that I used and the pattern that I used so that if you want to recreate it for yourself, you are more than welcome to. It's one of my favorites to wear, although it is flat work color work, which can be a little bit tricky to work on if you've never done it before. And then for socks, for socks, I'm wearing the hybrid socks again, where I have, I think it's like bee sting in the main color, and then the cuff and heel and toe are in that contrasting like speckled gray. Once again, super comfy, very cozy. Let's go light our candle of the day and we can get started on the knitting of my tree skirt. <laughs> we are going for candle number six today, which is making me realize that we are already halfway through craftmas, or at least after today's video, we will be spiced apple today. Oh, that smells like a very fresh, apple juice of some kind, like a very fresh apple cider. Although I will say I almost feel like I'm starting to set up an altar with the amount of candles I have sitting around my desk now. <laughs> I don't mind it though. I finished casting on and knit the first row of this tree skirt. There are quite a few stitches on this, but I kind of like that we start out with the maximum number of stitches and we go smaller because I know that it'll just get easier and easier to work on rather than me running out of room on my circulars. I also have some super cute stitch markers on this. We have a mix some woodcut sweaters as well as a kitten and the balls of yarn for that kitten. <laughs> Let's get to some knitting. We're on row nine of the chart out of 65 in total, and this is the first of the cables. I haven't done cables in a long time, and it's mainly because I find it frustrating to work with cable needles and have it go in front of and behind my work. I find it fiddly, and it stops kind of like my knitting flow, but I recently came across some tutorials on how to do cables without the extra cable needle and I practiced it a little bit so I think that's what I'm going to try this time. I was going to say something else but to be honest I'm so sleepy. I'll do this one row. I might regret it because I am so tired but I do just want to get one cable row done to show you the cables without a cable needle. Here's where I'm going to work my first cable. It's going to be a right left no nope, right leaning cable. So these two stitches if would be in the front and these two would be in the back. If I had a cable needle right now, I would put these two next stitches on the cable needle and I put them to the back of my work. And instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip these on the front and I'm gonna hold, like I'm gonna pinch my work against my back needle in the back here so I don't lose these two loops. And I'm gonna slip everything off. Hold on. It's hard to film this while you're doing it. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to slip the ones on the back, back on my needles, and bring these two to the front. And I've done the cable twist that you need to do. And now I just knit across these as usual. One, four. I don't know if that makes any sense. This isn't really meant to be a tutorial. There are plenty of clear tutorials out there, but I hope it gives a little bit of a sense of how you would do cable knitting without the cables. I'll finish this row up and then I'll probably check back in in the morning. It's the next evening and I feel much more rested tonight. Nutella is very excited right now because we just got finished playing. So she also probably looks a little tired. I hope the panting isn't too loud in the background. I did switch sweaters because it's a new day and this is my first steeped 
best cardigan that I've ever made. I think maybe even my first cardigan that I've really ever knit, and I, of course, went straight to Steaked. It's a modern pattern, though. I can leave the link down in the description. I actually used the exact same yarn for this cardigan that I am for this tree skirt. It might be my leftovers from this. I have just finished row 19. I printed out the chart and I'm crossing off the rows as I go, which is so much easier to keep track of. And so far, the pattern chart has been wonderful. I am just personally out of practice with reading cable charts. I haven't knit cable knits in four years, maybe more. I'm not sure. It's been a long time. So I really need a little bit more practice. The only thing that's a little off is outside of your pattern repeats on which end of the knits you have four extra stitches versus on which end you only have one extra stitch. That's just flipped from what I can tell, but the rest of it is great. And I'm having actually a lot of fun knitting this because I'm not using an extra cable needle. It is slower, of course, and I do have to pay attention to what I'm doing when I'm working on the cables to make sure I don't mess up. And one of my trees is messed up, but you just kind of go with the flow. Mistakes aren't the end of the world and it adds a little personality and character, in my opinion. The other nice thing is that each row gets shorter so it gets quicker as you keep going so it feels more and more like the end is attainable which I always appreciate in my knits. We have 19 out of 65 rows done and I'm just gonna keep on knitting. <laughs> we'll see how far we can get tonight. Also some of you may have noticed I'm, I try to crop it out because it doesn't look quite as cozy but the reality is is I watch a lot of YouTube videos while I knit and some of my favorites are Sims videos. I'm a big <laughs> James Turner fan, so I watch a lot of his Sims content in the background, and I'm also a simmer myself, so shout out to all the knitters and simmers out there. <laughs> chair. <laughs> it's the end of the evening. I'm about to head back to bed. This is how far we've gotten. I think this is row 25, 24 or 25, something like that. And I have finished the first little section of the tree. There's two more to go. I think this is turning out super cute so far. Yeah, but once again, knitting takes a while. And I also got my booster shot today. So my left arm feels awful. I had to like prop it up at some points to be able to knit and we'll come back tomorrow and see how I feel. Hopefully I'm well enough to knit. So we'll see you again tomorrow. I just finished row 33. Yes, row 33 of this pattern. And I think you're starting to see the tree come together a little bit better. I'm really enjoying this pattern. As I keep going, I feel like I'm getting faster and faster with the cabling. Like I said, it's been such a long time since I've done cabling, but I'm getting less clumsy at it, so it feels a lot more natural and a lot more relaxed to me, which is always really nice when you kind of feel like you've got the rhythm going. And I was also worried that I wouldn't be able to do complicated patterns that span over six stitches, like a cable three over three with a right split and a four over two with the left split. So it's a lot of complicated movements, but I did figure out. I figured out how to do it without a cable needle. I'm hoping that the last half of the pattern will go pretty quickly. I'm kind of on the fence of altering the pattern a little bit. It just is a usual pine tree, but I'm wondering if I should put like a bobble on top of the tree to be like the tree topper. So I think I'm just gonna curl up in my reading chair, snuggle with Nutella, and finish knitting this tree skirt.
We have 11 rounds to go until we are fully finished with this tree skirt and I have just finished the second section of the tree. I'm really liking how this looks. This soft, fluffy fabric just makes me want to curl up in it. I've been thinking a little bit more about the idea of adding baubles to this last section of the tree up here, and I've been going back and forth on it, and so I came to the brilliant idea that if I can't decide, why not do every other one? There's eight trees in total, so I'll do four without a little bobble and four with, and they'll be alternating, and hopefully that kind of satisfies me wanting to see it both with and without. And then the last thing I wanted to bring up is that it would actually be nice to be able to use mirror knitting on this because it's it is getting quite chunky and bulky so turning it around each time is a bit of a chore but I haven't learned how to purl back yet in in mirror knitting or backwards knitting however you want to call it and also the cables add on to the slight difficulty there where I'm already doing something new so I didn't want to add a whole other dimension to what I'm already doing so we're just gonna stay with how I usually knit with rotating the piece and I will do this last 11 rows and add a bobble on every other tree. I also think that we've seen more than enough knitting of this at this point so why don't we just go straight to the final reveal. It's a few days later and the tree skirt is fully complete and I am absolutely in love with it. I can't wait to decorate with it. It's also so nice to learn a new thing when I'm working on a project. So I get not only the end result of the project, but I increase my confidence in a new technique. And I think that this is going to encourage me to pick up a lot more cabling projects in the future because I can now cable without cabling needles, which to be honest, really frustrated me in the past and stopped me from working on cabling projects. Now that I'm looking at it. I don't think that this just has to be a tree skirt. It would be a very mini skirt on me. I think Nutella could wear it as a better skirt herself. Or what I found is that if you aren't into decorating, if you aren't doing Christmas or you want a tree skirt but you still like this pattern, it actually makes quite the nice cowl. It's like a little capelet. How cute is that? <laughs> So a multi-purpose, multi-use tree skirt slash dog skirt slash cowl. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this craft miss. I hope that you'll join me very soon. The next time that you'll join me, I will be decorating using all of these different ornaments and garlands and everything that I've made, as well as baking a recipe from a 1929 recipe book that I have. I'll see you all then. Bye.